Conservation Commission meeting is uh, now in session. It's being recorded for RC TV live, Comcast Channel 22, or Verizon okay. Channel 33. Video videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob, and check www.rctv.org for more information and for replay times. Chuck, we don't have Meadowbrook, right? We don't. Okay, and I. Ooh. Yeah, let's do uh, the order of conditions for 11 Gregory, Gregory Lane. Did anybody get to review that? I did. I did. I, did. I looked at it. Yeah. I didn't have any comments, but well, Nikki, you had a comment? I did. I think when we get to the list of additional conditions in the back, the flags listed where the bounds are supposed to be don't match what's on the plan. Or at least that's what I saw. And it said, Chuck, know that it said the bounds will be 25 feet north of the line. I think this was to be south of the line. But I wasn't really sure because I was in the train last week. Yeah. <coughs> So the bounds that was that was corrected, um, and I have the bounds on A two. They they're on the twenty five foot Z and V every forty feet in that turning intervals. So that's what it was supposed to say. So that was corrected. Okay, that was about it. And then I got some, some comments from uh, Dave, which I will add. I guess there was a couple of, uh, it says May, September instead of just uh, September. And I think um, in the findings, number two, there's, a, there's another edit that I have to make. But outside of those three, um, if anyone uh, has other changes they want or conditions that were forgotten about? Otherwise, I thought it looked good. So I'll, I'll make a motion to um, approve and issue the order of conditions for 270 0693 11 Gregory Lane. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, for everyone who came in, um, there's a sign-in sheet in the back. Okay. Bob, did you second or was it Dave? Dave. My voice is much sweeter and higher. Okay. Sorry. Okay, Sorry. I'll, I'll make that <laughs> distinction next time. <laughs> That's recorded. That's right. No, we're live. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, did somebody say ham bone? Tens of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My email ought to just light up. That's right. Certificates, right? Um, do we want to talk about <laughs> one that we might um, approve, which would be 99 Fairchild Drive? Or do you want to talk about Green Street? Um, Green Street. I don't know if there's any reason to talk about that, but we could quickly do that and 99. Okay. Maybe. Um, we, we, we did a site visit on uh, Tuesday, Chuck, Dave, myself, and uh, the um, hydro seeding is coming in, uh, even on the sloped area, even though they didn't put the sod all the way up. They did remove the leaves um, in the back, as we had requested. They put the, are those called downspouts? What are those called? Diverters. Diverters yeah. on the um, downspouts. downspouts. Yeah. Um, those were in place, but what, what were not in place were the, the bounds. So I think we would not. I stopped out there this afternoon. They're still not in place. Yeah. Okay. So. 
Thanks for doing that, Dave. So, I'm, I'm confused. At last, and I'm a little bit confused. Last meeting, we signed everything and said it would be ratified, assuming it's not uh, those things, those were, things done. were done. So, they have not been done. So we just haven't filed it. We haven't. We haven't issued it. We haven't issued, issued it, it at all. Okay. So yeah. That was what we had discussed. And, and, uh, Is there any sort of time? <coughs> the homeowner. Well, no, you signed it, and I'll just issue it when. Okay. I'll just put the date in when. When, when we have issue it. That's yeah. fine with me. Uh, so they're going to have um, it done like the next Tuesday or something. He was going to. He hasn't called to say he's com it's complete. So we've we've been checking. So. I think he knows that he needs to get those granite bounds in. Okay. So. Okay. And then uh, 99 Fairchild Drive. We had a, uh, a laundry list from Jack Sullivan. 21 Clint Street. No, 99 Fairchild oh, Drive. Okay. It, there's a there's a printout from Jack, and we observed uh, the bounds. There were three bounds, but one one found on the way in, then the second one was on the post to the um, second story porch. Uh, and then there was a third one at the um, end of the property. Um, we observed five blueberry bushes that appeared healthy. And then we asked the homeowner to not mow the lawn beyond the blueberry bushes. There's a little bit of a fringe beyond the blueberry bushes, but that's right down into the wetland. Is there anything else that I might have forgotten? No. Okay. I think that was well, also, it. We also said that uh, the uh, you asked that no leaves be blown into the wetlands, and they said that they they backed the leaves. Up yeah, the landscaper so that they they, they, they said that they wouldn't put any leaves into the wetland area. Yeah. So Good. So that was addressed. This was an order of conditions that we asked. Um, we had uh, no need for a as-built plan, so that's why there wasn't one received with this. So I thought oh, that okay. I thought that was unusual. I can't couldn't remember why. And then you went back and saw yeah okay. Yeah. So. Do I? It was confusing. Yeah. And do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve the order conditions for. Issue a certificate of compliance for 99 Fairchild. Do I hear a second? Second. <laughs> All those in favor. Okay, great. That's a 99 Fairchild right here. This, oh. <coughs> And being seven, a little after seven ten, we have an order of conditions: Simon's Way, Reading Rifle and Revolver Club, a minor plan change. This is fine yeah, for me. <coughs> Thank you. So the red line is what we'd like to uh, change for the wall. Um, I I do, I do. They're here. Thank you. Um, so basically what we'd like to do is change from the pesto blocks, which were the sandbags that we proposed earlier. And, um, uh, I'm going to need some of those. You can take some too. Eight blocks are two feet tall, two feet wide, and six feet long. And there's a detail on how the blocks will be constructed. It gives us the same height. Uh, the footprint area is the base is a little bit wider, but we've held the edge of the base at the same limit of work that was on the original plan, so that it's not going to be any closer to the wetland. So these are. Um, after putting the project out to bid, these were found to be substantially less 
uh, less expensive. Um, so we'd like to make this change. These aren't interlocking block colors. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're, they're two foot by two foot by six feet long, and they're interlocking. They have a, a channel on the bottom, and then they have a groove on oh, the bottom. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So they do interlock. Great. Not end to end. I see. I'm, I'm, yep. Well, we we actually get to look this, is a, into. <coughs> this is a little modified detail, so you can sure. see that uh, the interlocking here. Okay. I thought I heard somebody say they were, and I didn't see anything here that said they were, but that's fine. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Um, question. So, so each of these blocks that makes up these ten foot high walls, they're going to be each block is two foot by two foot by six foot. Mm -hmm. um, are they solid concrete yes. or are they hot? Okay. Solid concrete. And um, uh, are they going to meet the specifications for safety for ballistics within the range? Yeah, they have been used in other ranges. And these, the, the interesting part about these is they're not. They're not intended to be shot at. They're just well. safety <laughs> barriers. They will get the stray bullet. Let's hope they yeah. are not shot yeah. at. Yeah. Right. I mean, we'll, we'll have monitors and everything, so if people are deliberately shooting at it, we'll know and they'll lose their membership. Um, right. But yeah, these are just a safety thing. Um, you know, the, if, if anything hits it, the bullet's just going to collapse, fall to the ground. It might bounce about 10 feet or so, 20 feet, depending on the caliber of the bullet. Okay. Um, but it would deflect downrange anyway. So, the, the the sand things that were proposed before was one of the things that that was, you know, good about those was that they they're easy to move or, or no? No, they're they're, they're a once, lot once you put them up, difficult. Once you put them up, you you basically have was to destroy it, them to <coughs> get them out of there. Was it a big like cage, and then you put the sand in it? Okay, yeah. all right, yeah. Yeah, and the commission at the time was concerned about sand getting over the top of it right. when we were backfilling. These are a lot more uh, simple to install. If something happens to one of them, we can pick it up, throw it away, bring it in the one. So it, it's pretty easy to build. With the other one, if, if a, a bullet did hit the structure, does it go into the sand? Yeah, it would penetrate into the sand. But in this it. case, it would ricochet off? It would ricochet off. Right. Right. Bowls, right? It would, yeah, it would fragment. You know, the fragments would go, and all the direction is transmitted downrange anyway. The bags rip and tear over time. They need maintenance. Oh, the the sand, <coughs> the yes, sand. The bags have to come from like Carolina. <coughs> it's gonna take time and effort to bring them up. There's a lot of manpower to put them in. Mm -hmm. You're gonna need two pieces of machinery. You're gonna move it. They need men to hold it open. This is a filling sequence. Right, also. I remember that. And then okay. there's a stacking sequence. These ones here are locally sourced from within the town, literally, Ben Benu Road, and what's the other one in Wakefield. Uh, so they can get be locally sourced, transfer it over here locally, they're a lot cheaper to build. I'll say it only cost me a third rather than this, you know, the HESCO bags. And uh, they're just as effective, but there's zero maintenance. There's nothing to fix. You move them once and you place them, you're done. The other one, you transport. Set them up and you get to buy the sand, not where to fill them, yeah. and you need manpower to fill them. Yep. The dollars went up and up. Yep. So, this would be just as effective and it would have longer lasting with zero maintenance. It's been done at other gun clubs. I have pictures that I can show you. And uh, no, what am I kidding? Uh, that's the same job. You know, and again, they just they have it's basically lost thing. Yeah. Yeah. Lost in, in time yep. to get it. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. yeah. yeah. If, if I can, um, I want to talk about the compacted sub base for a minute. Um, okay. What what do you anticipate to be the finished height and width of those? Um, I got this, this a, and yeah. that says this one is actually a modified detail that supersedes that. <coughs> so this one, basically, it shows the blocks, but basically would oh, so it's buried. Yeah, the so first block gonna actually is going to be a foot into the ground. So the total effective height is going to be nine feet. Oh, okay. So there is going to be some excavating because no, I was yeah a little so bit of excavation to get out the loam, the loam and the topsoil, subsoil, whatever, the mm -hmm. any suitable materials, backfill it with the gravel. Can I take then, this or? Oh yes, yeah. this. Um, I did not get this detail. I think it was included in mine. Yeah, I got it. I think we have a different one. 
Oh, I got a so different one. one, yeah, one, one, one. Oh. Okay. Uh, so I got that as well, though. All right. Well, I missed that. So this shows the um, the first block that's actually uh, it's going to be the six foot wide base. Um, yeah. That would be about a foot into the ground. So it would be a compacted uh, like three quarter inch stone dust. They call it a dense pack, dense grade uh, crushed stone. It would be at least six inches of that underneath the um, underneath the base, and then the rest of it would just going to excavate the top and subsoil. Similar to what we would have had to do with the, the Hesco blocks because we wouldn't want that mushy soil. And and what's going to happen with the excavated soils? We would use it right on site to spread it within the range area. Just just fill in the range. Yeah. Okay. Um. So is this within the 25 foot? So all of this is outside the 25 foot. So the area that we uh, previously delineated the work in. Yeah. yeah, so I think, we, I think we had given a bearing previously. <coughs> right, but what's different is the HESCO barriers, I, I understood that they were going on top of the soil, whereas yeah. this, you're going down a foot. foot no, down. I think you, they, yeah, they still would have had to prep that area as well. Prep either way. Yes. But is this a structure and those are not, I guess is what I'm getting at. Well, a structure, you know, it would be mass general, you know, building codes. A structure would have to either support something or be a retaining wall. And this is neither a retaining wall, nor is it supporting anything. It's not a building. It's a freestanding wall. It's a freestanding wall. It's, free, it's a barrier wall. That's all it is. And the other thing with this is, this is also, the footprint of this is much narrower than the Hesco barriers. <coughs> yeah. Hesco so barriers. Well, well base not with the foot. The base is wider, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. The, the, right. the wall itself is in the wall is the wall is, is narrow. And due to the fact that it's basically an upside down T, it's very stable. So you have well, to have soil well, movement over six feet for this thing to need to move at all. Well, but what connects the the blocks to the sideways? Uh, be, there is like no Bengals. connection. Yeah, here. The, I mean, the, there's no actual shear key right here from the sideways. No, that's one. just the that's, that's just from the, the one below it, right? Yeah. So what actually connects those? So like it's gravity. I mean, these these are pretty heavy blocks. This yeah. is going to be up to That's gonna twelve be feet high, right? No, no. eight feet. No, no nine. I think oh, it shows feet. ten to twelve over here. That's it. This is the that would be the U wall in the back. There's a different type of wall that we're proposing here. This is only to replace the Hesco bags here and here. The reason I red line this is we shifted the back wall a little bit further away from the weapon. Okay. All right. So this this. But so it's still about 10 foot high, right? It'll be nine, uh -huh. nine feet exposed. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I might add, the higher the better for all intents and purposes. But we stopped at that for stability purposes. Well, yeah, so, so uh, the higher the better is not, they're made to stop not better for this thing from falling well, over. <laughs> well, they yeah, made I mean, to stop it's a, it's a so that's Height it. to width ratio is four to one. Yeah. yeah. And these are pretty heavy blocks. So <laughs> as long as the, block, the base block is level, they're pretty solid. And there are numerous examples where these are stacked for high, freestanding, level ground, no problem. Yes. Um, they're done if, I that. if I recall, two by two by four block weighs about 2,500 pounds. These are about 36. These are about 36. Yeah. 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 So, so they're, they're substantial. There's a lot of weight there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not going to get blown over by the wind. Like, <clears throat> no. That's for sure. No. So are you, uh, this, project um, so we already approved a project and I'm just making sure that you're not going to you can use the same work sequence um, and access and build these things from inside the shooting area and you don't have to come around the outside right. and I think you also stated that you're not um, these aren't any bigger than what was already approved correct with the exception of the base and then the bases the edge of the base is going to be as you can see here, so this is the full, this red line of the edge of the base, the dash lines, and this is the edge of the Hesco block on the outside. So it's the so same. It's no closer to the weapon. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's in the same footprint. We're not going over the sock, the 25 foot zone. Mm -hmm. We're not going anywhere in there. Of course, once you're on this side, it's all gun range anyway. Uh, yeah, and all the work's being 
is on the maybe this is inside. On the side. Yeah. The truck, can you scroll to the, the right side of the page? This right? Okay. Alright, so you. Same Sorry, I think the version I had didn't have to put in the same this. Yeah. We, we went back and forth. Uh, we ended up deciding to go with the six foot uh, blocks yep. sideways Five. rather than the gravel footing because it'll be more stable. Yeah. It'll be parallel in the ground. Just think of an upside down T. And that's about what it would look like for a face on. That's an end on. I don't have any issues. Any other comments, questions? Well, I, think, I think this is a structure in the 35. I think the Hesco barriers were a structure in the 35. So they didn't have anything underground other than changing the soil structure? Or is this you're burying the footing? You're putting that six foot wide. No, they had to, um, the Hesco barriers weren't just sitting on the ground. You had to. No, they were about a foot in. And you had to take out the organic matter and put something there for them to sit on, right? Right. So I think the work area is the pretty much the same. It's identical. And ultimately, once the trees were removed, that area could have stayed the same. So the trees were cut there and they were removed. Yeah. And the yeah, roots were removed. Them. So that area is. Not the same as so the did we approve a variance for the structure? Yep. Mm -hmm. We did. Okay. Okay. They got a variance because of um, all the letters we got from the ATF and the. And the yeah. No, I, I just wanted to make sure since we're so they particular the about structures in the 35 that we get it right. So as long as it was a no, we got a variance. Yes. variance it was yes. a variance previously that we had voted on. Okay. We hear a motion. Make a motion to uh, approve the minor plan change of order conditions 270-0678, Simon's Way, Reading Rifle and Revolver Club. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a couple. If you want to grab and get two of them out of there, and you're going to take the rest. Right. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, too. Um, are we going to talk about the certificate of compliance for 21 Hunt Street? Yeah. Did expect uh, applicants here, but... Um, I know they were part of an email chain, but I have not heard directly from the applicants, only Jack Sullivan. Okay. And uh, his only question was that um, we have the certificate of compliance and there's a um, certificate of occupancy that's needed for the homeowners to start using that garage. And uh, his question was, would we sign off on that? And uh, typically with this information that we have, I do sign off. You do sign off? I sign off because the building inspector, um, although will wait a certain amount of time, he's not going to wait forever for grass to grow and okay, I other things outside the building uh, ah. to give an occupancy. There are two processes. They do cross at some point, but you know we can work independently. Well, we had an inspection and we did see some issues. I guess I went back and looked at the the plan and remember um, there was a car parked to the east of the garage 
and that had stone in it, and it doesn't look like it has it on the as-built plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then we we observed some uh, to the north of the garage. There were three um, blowouts on the slope, erosion blowouts between you know the back of the garage and the silt fence. And when we looked at the um, the rain garden. The um, in, infall, infall um, pipe went over rocks, and it looked like it had been blown. You know, there was a lot of uh, uh, dirt on those rocks, and, and I think Dave pointed out those are, you know, probably came from the the parking lot area, the but the driveway. But the um, it, below that that riprap stone, it was kind of blown away, mm -hmm. but in other areas, including the slopes to the rain garden and the base, it, it, there was four inches of um, mulch, like... Bark mulch. B yeah, bark mulch. And then the outfall was flush with, you know, the topography, and that looked like um, that wasn't, that was just, you know, letting the water just kind of settle, but it also went down and caused some erosion. And then there was uh, quite a bit of leaf debris um, and a lot of branches uh, in the wetland, right next to the wetland area. Can I ask, the bark mulch, did it look like it was washed in? No, or it was placed. It was, it was put in. It was put placed. in. I just thought it was a odd. Yeah, that was the base. And it wasn't bark mulch, it was actually um, chipped, as if, chipped, if, if someone had chips. chipped some, yeah. some brush or something oh. at your, at your oh, house. Okay. You know, so maybe the trees that were so taken down, all that material was used. Yeah. Was it, it was strange, because, and I've seen, another, I've seen the um, rain garden, because I walked my bike through it, at uh, Raven's Dental, and it doesn't have that kind of right. material in it. It has real mulch. Yeah, it's got real mulch, and it's not real, real thick like it was that was thick hmm. not rubber mulch is it no they do i mean they do sell that they all kinds of dyed rubber from mulch in lieu of wood i don't think it was yeah. no. it was, it was wood. wood so at this point they're they're asking for occupancy permit not close out no, they're asking for a certificate of compliance also because we have the paperwork in the process. Because I don't think I have an issue about occupancy, but closeout, I think it, it doesn't seem to me like um, that rain garden is functioning the way it was designed. Sorry for my tardiness. Hi. A lot of people with no heat. He's our homeowner now. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. So, so Chuck, I, I'm I'm a little confused. So if we issue the certificate of compliance, they don't have to do anything further, right? Right. That's basically what we're saying. If we <coughs> issue the certificate of compliance, it's a certi They're looking for a certificate of compliance at, at Hunt Street, right? Twenty one Hunt Street. They are. Okay. They're also looking for. They're working for occupancy. an occupancy. Right. Also. So you're saying if we issue the certificate of compliance, they don't have to do anything? Is that, I'm asking, because I thought that there were things on the plan that weren't correct on their right. as-built. Right, and we're going through the process right now identifying those things. So okay. I don't, I, I mean, uh, do I need so to take another step back to find out why you're asking that question? I don't know, why, is it, why are we looking at it at this meeting tonight? Because if things aren't finished, I don't know where you come from. Just. Okay. I'm just well, lost. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to be confusing, but if we issue the certificate of compliance, mm -hmm. okay, and they can get an occupancy permit, do we have recourse to fix some of this? No, there's no, uh, there's no bond, and um, but we would have uh, the recourse of not issuing the certificate of compliance, and if and that's usually called, and, um, that's needed when they sell the house, or they refinance. And we also have, um, you know, an enforcement order. I mean, we're holding 154 Green Street up based on a laundry list of items that I don't think we want to start getting in the habit of 
signing a certificate of compliance when they're still a punch list. I think we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and I just <coughs> thought you were advocating for for issuing the certificate of compliance. No. What you're advocate, advocating is um, the occupancy permit. You can well, I'm just saying we're kind of, I mean, I think there's, that at that's... At some point, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, there. there may be some more time that we can hold that up if, if needed. Uh, I don't even think Glenn is back from his vacation yet, but um, it's it's certainly going to come up. And again, it's, you know, they look at the structure and the interior, right. exterior, and we're looking at the land uh, mass around it. Well, Jack said, I'm assuming that you can sign the certificate of occupancy permit while we work through the punch list items. So it, it well, and that's based on past, you know, past which, projects. Which is fine, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, and I th and I think these things, although they they've intersected here at this uh, meeting, it, they're not really. We can't hijack the occupancy process. Yeah, that's fine. And it's it's some towns don't even have the commission sign off on that. But you know what what you want to think about is your comfort level to have whatever you're going to ask for completed. And what I don't want is a certificate of compliance hanging out there until the house is sold or there's refinance. I mean, I think it needs to be more timely than that. So that's mm -hmm. that's where I'm at. And so that, that list of things, did you get? Uh, so, yeah, I, I actually, because I'm, I'm working on something all day, but uh, I've been on emails. And uh, a lot of the stuff looks to me, it's a lot of house housekeeping stuff I have to really take care of. Um, and we just got hit with that crazy rainstorm. We had a lot of fresh room. I mean, we have buildings flooded everywhere. I mean, it's yeah. it was kind of catastrophic than just water. Um, and I thought, and I woke up the next day and that rain guy was actually full and went to the spillway. And it actually worked the proper way. I actually have pictures of it being full. Um, a lot of it's housekeeping. A lot of it was fresh soil. I do agree that there's a lot of stuff that, you know, there is going to be erosion on fresh soil that we are going to have to go back and refill and fix that. Um, as far as the bounds, if we have to add another one at the property line, that's no problem. So, um, yeah, so I don't know if you want to go through the list, but sure. there's the, the bounds, the one, I pulled one out of the ground, it was only a foot. Okay. Um, okay. So there need to be, it needs to be three feet okay. and you would, you would put it in the ground two feet. Okay. You can put it in the ground deeper. It doesn't have to be a foot above. We don't actually require it to be okay. above the ground by anything, Sorry. but you typically we ask that it's above the ground because you're not going to be allowed to mow in back of those bounds. And we want a visible barrier there. So those bounds need to go one at the far end where the street is because we want to prevent people from dumping leaves there. We want to show them that there is a conservation line there. That's something we talked about. And then wherever you have the rest of them, that, that's fine. But I only checked one and it was a foot. And they need the to be three feet. Two that have three that were three feet, and two of them I couldn't get any farther down. So I did cut. Um, I, I didn't think it was be an issue. But I mean, if you physically could pull it up, I mean, wow. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, that's you know that gets just gets into the definition of permanent. If it can be moved, it's no, not really well, permanent. No, yeah. yes, then that wasn't deep enough. That's yeah. fair enough to say. Um, um, and oh, of course, we'll fix it. Um, the other additional, I'm sorry, the other additional one, do you want a property one? I'm just, I only did it where they were told to be state, so I just, yeah. And then the ground was told. So it's somewhere on the property line as you would just continue down, um, you know, hunt right into, okay. into the so back. So right now he has a state at the property line right there. Would that qualify right at the far corner? Would that qualify for where you'd like one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right at that state, I'm just Okay. And then whatever, you know, we'll make sure that everything's sturdy, whether I pour concrete around it, if there was rock there, mm -hmm. I'll pour concrete around it to reinforce it. Is that fair? Well, uh, so you can pull it up. Almost make like a big foot out of it. No. You need to get three foot okay. granite, granite bounds and shake concrete. Out, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you need just, with a post hole digger, you need to okay. dig them down three out. feet. Okay. Yep. That's just, no problem. Yeah. That's. That's pretty standard. We have um, like a, a signage for the top, um, and you just tell me how many you need and bring them out there, and you just got to glue them, glue them oh, to the so top. Oh, there was a sign on top. Yeah. We were a little confused on that, actually. Yeah. Say it, it was a sign. So, um, 
we'll put new ones in. We'll lock them down, and then um, and I'll cut. Then we can come to you for the signs. Yeah, okay, th yeah, perfect. that's per any time. You know, any time you can pick those up. One where the stake is at the property line. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm clear on the balance now, so that's good. And I'll make sure it's a foot out of the ground. Um. The, the, the erosion, I suppose, that'll get fixed, and the, um, uh, hold on a second. One of the things was, uh, I observed when we were up there, there's some erosion around the large stones that are at the, uh, the driveway corner yeah. of the garage uh, yeah. that appears, and you can kind of see where the silt on the driveway has, yeah. has, has gone that way, and uh, it eroded the, the loam and and the grass that's around that. And um, I mean, just looking at it, you know, something that make that pretty easy if you if you put a, a strip of, of, uh, of uh, crushed stone yeah. on the left-hand side, of, as you're looking at that, that right there, yeah. on the left-hand side of your driveway, then that would keep any of the, the water that's washing up the driveway and that would infiltrate in, yeah. in that and it won't wash your grass up. Well, no, I'm, I'm all for it after I saw how bad it eroded from yeah. that. I mean, that's also due with fresh soil. Not They probably didn't compact it yeah. enough. Yeah, everybody's in a rush. Um, but I, I'm more than happy to do that because it's going to keep the maintenance from the from that rain garden. From, I mean, because I had to go, I mean, I, the leaves I had to pull out of here the other day. <laughs> I mean, it's just a pit. But, um, no, I, if you guys are okay with that, I'd like to put the brush stone right in front of that. If that's that's a suggestion. Machine. It's really up to the commission. Okay. Yeah, uh, so you might want to talk to Jack about how to straighten out some, some of those things with the rain garden. Okay. Um, because, you know, we, we don't design your project. We just, sure. you know, evaluate it once it's completed. And that okay. just didn't seem to be working properly jack said there was it was a heavy rainstorm it was only designed for a one-year storm which i understand there was an erosion inside the rain garden but um it looked like it looked like those rocks weren't set in place and maybe something needs to be done there maybe not maybe it was just the fact that things just got uh, when the water went over the top it kind of compacted it and it looks like it's loosened up maybe need some more think, soil um, who knows be, there was a lot of stuff too i think flushed through all those piping i ran in the ground Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff did flush from when the house, all the recharge from the house came down. Um, but I think it's more housekeeping than anything. I just get to you know, stay on that, make sure everything's thoroughly cleaned out. And then add, I think, some more rip rock or, um, yep. you know, you have more cobblestone or something right there. Well, yeah, just, to just control the erosion. Because we'll go back out and check, oh, and yeah, check that. Um, the spillway, which was the rip rap on the back side. Mm -hmm. That's typically a little bit lower than the berms on either side of it, and it looked like if, if something was going to spill over the top of that, it could it could go anywhere. Okay. So you really want to direct it to the low point. Okay. So and and the way that thing was built, and I don't know you know who was you know had their uh, equipment out to see that the low end seemed like it was further down, not directly in the center. Okay. So you can look at that and make sure you're not losing any water out the back okay. or the side. Um, and build up the berm on that side, but just drop the riprap. And as far as erosion control goes beyond the riprap, it looks like when it did spill over it, it ate up the soil. It did, yeah, there was a definite hole at the bottom. So you have to watch that or add more riprap. So, so I, can I extend it down more into, like into the yard, just follow like the trail so it has a straight path to go? You can, just, just remember you're creating a trench Okay. So it needs to be like, um, you know, it needs to be like a cup. So okay, um, don't just pile it there and hope that it kind of hovers over the top. You need to do that. And again, Jack should should help you with that. Um, this was the first for us to do. So yeah. it's a learning curve for us. And, it, and if there's any more riprap going down that slope, if you're if you're extending that riprap spillway, we should probably see that just to see really what the dimensions of that are. You know. It's just, no, I mean, it's a homeowner project. He's just gonna. It's not. It's. It looks like. You trust it's not going to become major. I don't. Installation I, of riprap. It was far less stuff. than. <coughs> I just asked. Far less than what was needed. It, it had that that look. I don't know if you're going to overbuild it. You know, maybe I could go out there with you yeah, and, and, and walk through that hard. 
just tell you what what I think. I, I actually think if you can get the grass to establish, it would it would work out yeah. for the best, but that might be a little bit hard. Um, but we can go over the options okay. also. Yeah, I'm willing to do whatever we had to make it right. I um, like I said, it was a, a, first for us, it's a learning experience. Um, do, who did the work? Did I haven't gone to it. Yeah. But in all fairness, they didn't give it either. They, you know, so it was one of those things where everybody kind of collaborate and work together to try to, you know, make it work. It's not a thing that most people, most landscapers do every day. At least not the ones I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, would you incorporate him in the uh, in in rebuilding this or that Probably company? Not. At this point, my budget is destroyed. Okay, so, so it's just going to be you. All right. So then I'll, I can go out there and. I mean, I Okay. Fortunately, at this point, it's all Saturday, Sundays for me. So it's, it's going to be the homeowner repairing this. So uh, how do okay. you feel now? Yeah, I just, I you know, um, this being his first project, it's, you know, I see this uh, rain garden as being, you know, designed for fairly, um, fairly small storms. Mm -hmm. You know, and if what we're getting is the more extreme storms, um, then, you know, I, a piece of me kind of wonders, well, if this is only designed for the really smaller storms, well, then what happens to this thing over time, to its function over time, when it's completed, when it's bombarded on a more regular basis with the more intense storms? And that's a question I guess I have for Jack, because a lot of the site visit notes basically said, um, this rain garden may have been designed according to the way it was supposed to have been designed. But is it, is, it, is it fitting the need for the location and for the function it's supposed to serve? So I don't know if it's supposed to happen. I know the riprap is, is like it's an overflow. So the riprap is, the way that's constructed, I assume it's gonna have to be a little bit more, it should really carefully fit the situation it's being subjected to. A lot more than the rain garden. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, it needs to infiltrate the new impervious. So whatever's coming off the roof, m what I right. saw out there was the roof does, the leaders go right into this rain garden. But I think and it, there's an unexpected uh, sheet flow from the driveway going right. into this rain garden, too. It's that, think, it's that one. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. I think that's okay. what, that Blowing was the thing that okay. wasn't figured here. And if there's a, a and if there's flow a, from the, not only the, yeah. the driveway, but there's also the leaders that come off the house that also flow onto the driveway. Those, yeah. So you have. And if the driveway is um, diverted with some ru right. some small well, gravel I mean, trench, I you know, I, th I think there's ways to solve this. I just want to make sure that the rock, the rain garden works for you, sure. the way it's supposed to, the way it's designed. Uh -huh. And if and if it needs an overflow of some sort, that overflow doesn't destroy the functionality of the rain garden. Yeah. I think it's going to be more than just homeowners. I just think it's a learning curve too. We got hit with crazy water. It wasn't settled. I would like to put the rip rock there in the front where they did a road at the at the boulders, and mm -hmm. you know we'll kind of just see what it ha what happens. I mean, I don't mind going over a schedule over a certain amount of time to make sure that the up keeps there. I mean, I don't I don't plan on negating. It's my yard. I put a lot of hard work into that place, so. Good. Yeah, it just it, it just had that um, that look to it. Uh, the only other thing that I could, well, there's there's a list, and I'll send you the list so you guys can kind of like digest that and figure out how that's going to happen. Um, but the it, it's not really mulch that's the bed of this rain garden. It looks like the wood chips from um, maybe so, from the work. Yeah, no, we actually no, in all fairness, it really wasn't the stuff that you use on playgrounds. We thought it was supposed to make like a natural look. I, is it synthetic? Sure it really is. No, it's real. Like it's the stuff they use it's on wood chips? playgrounds and stuff. Wood chips. Yeah. So yeah, no, what they actually did. And it was a heavy layer of it too. Yep. And the, and the bushes were actually the bushes were actually those little plants were getting suffocated by it, and then the water came and it squatted down. So I guess that's a question. You know, uh, I have is is that does that help the function of the rain garden, or not? Or you know, does it I fit the design? Know. So I just did what I was supposed to do. Okay. I, I'm not the designer or the... Right. I mean, it looks like... I'm a homeowner. Right. Yeah. 
right. the, the I plants know. are I'm in, on, right. and they're touching the ground. And as long as this material stays around, I mean, you, you, you're going to have to keep that working. So if those plants sure. die off, you're going to gonna have to, uh, yeah. Do you have any sort of like um, maintenance guide for this? No, there mean, wasn't one with? It's really, no. I mean. No. Well, okay. I, think the, I think the order has have to maintain the the operation and maintenance in it. Um, but not specific, but it's like, not site right. specific enough to be, to help them out in, in these types well, of situations. Well, I guess the plants are dead, obviously, have to replant them. Replant right. Them. I mean, if, if it's you know, maintained, they have to right. fix it. The basic the idea being, you know, you want it to absorb as much water as you can. That's true. You know, but. I mean, I, I mean yeah. we're going to do whatever we have to do to make our house beautiful. We're not yeah, we're it's, here forever. It's, it's pretty right visible, right. so I, I don't need to you know, see what happens, see what grows in. Um, Unfortunately, so. if it didn't, I wasted money and I got to replant it again. It's just how it works. Well, I hope and it grows. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, did your spec, spec ask? Or, or a spec for the rain garden show four inches of this I, material that you use on playgrounds? I know it was told to use a certain amount of inches of bark mulch and I was adamant that it had to be there. Um, and it was, it is there, it was there. I mean, I can rip, I can scratch it all up to show it. It did get matted down quite a bit. And I was just in there digging out and using it. Right. It was a lot, and I was worried about the bushes too, so I kind of threw them away. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I honestly don't know the design. I just took a picture, and that's what I have to do. I'm not really a small landscape or. Well, my hope when some of these get written is that even if you're not a landscape designer or sure. anything, that when you when you get my hope in that writing these documents, right. that it is readable to the people, whether they're yeah, landscape yeah. designers or not. You know what I mean? Because if otherwise, what's the point of writing a ma a maintenance plan? You know what I mean? Yeah, it definitely is in there that we have to put out the bar mulch. Are we? Is it, are we not? If you don't want the bar mulch? Is that the question? I don't know what the spec was. It said uh, to put bar mulch in it. I know. How much bar mulch? Through Sorry. all these people are gathered, I'm so unprepared. That's so, so. no, okay. I figured I'd be home by four there. You've you know, got it here. We're, we're two to three inches fine shredded hardwood mulch. Right in detail. Okay, so it sounds like it's the right stuff, just slightly it's more like than, just a little thicker than, than what's called for in the spec. So I think the berm as needed is where we need some work. <coughs> yeah, so this is what would prevent the driveway from flowing in. Yeah. Was there a berm? Was there a berm? Well, that's the spec says berm as needed. It's, you know, design on site. On the downhill side? And then it says native plants. Well, it's, I mean, you can just say it's for all around. Yeah. This is Kentucky windage, um, you know. So, So we don't want to recharge the driveway at all there. We don't want any water to go there. Is that kind of our, I thought it was get as much as you can in there. You're in that great, the great position of, you know, you're the designer. We're okay. just going to see that it functions properly. Okay. So if you want that driveway runoff to go in there, That's so you're going to, you're, you know, you're going to be, you know, going through this winter, you know, want all that stuff out on the street, if you want it to go on the driveway, you don't want it to cause ice on your driveway. So you're going to decide whether it's going in the berm, and if it's eroding, then you're going to have to fix that and try to make that work. It looks like you're going to just see what happens and keep, you know, keep getting that thing to work. But this shows a berm, and that means that you could have, you can build up so they want me to next to the driveway so the she flow kind of hits that berm and continues out into the street. Back to the street. So I can, so you can actually build wall. it up higher than that. No. You can. You, 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 could, you could do higher. Or you could. Yeah. Oh, you could. Just, oh, I thought it was a bad idea. The wall is in here, right? 
What you want to be careful of is the Chuck's point. Is, um, when that water runs out, is this you're, the, you're right at the cul de sac, right? Well, the the there is a wall. There's, there's, there's a wall there. So, there. you want to but think so about when all that water runs into the street. Going Where's it going to go when it's freezing out? It's not very high. Is it going to go right into a storm just, drain or is it going to cause a puddle? It, it can go. Did you get a puddle today? No, it's not two feet high. Then you might it's be only better a few inches higher drive. than uh, oh, high you know, the, yeah, go the level of the driveway, and it's pretty close to the driveway. We need some massive yeah. amount of driveway. He's right at the end. He's right at the end of what the onions. Yeah, I remember going. I just don't remember the, the you know the slope of the the road. So the road itself, if it continues it's to settle steep. away, it's pretty steep. Then it slopes yeah. right off. But that the does thing. back up pretty bad there too yeah. as well. So recharging it into like putting water. And this is just standard detail. Chaos. This is not. Yeah. In all fairness, in the in the into the road, into the road, yeah. So you get the whole street, and you then get, it always backs up because nobody's ever cleaned up. The I don't end. know if I saw all that. I actually rigged it the other day. I saw. Sure. Is, there's no drain down there. There's no it's storm it's drain that catches. That there's size, no catch base. Not not like I mean, it, if sheet flows yeah. into yeah. a gully yeah. and yeah, they just put like red rock down. There right. Like he's been so this is He couldn't get any closer. Right. There's a there's an easement. Right. Yeah. Still way. Okay. But it looks 100 percent better this was now okay. that it did this, this spring. Yeah, you had yeah. giant piles of sticks and leaves yeah, and correct. logs. Yeah. The house and the everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. So, yeah. And so, so that's that's yeah. the thing. You know, if it's so already this cooling is water here there, because the then pipe comes in, it's, it's right up top here. It, it I don't think that, I don't I remember like, that many. Like, I don't even plants. Know they were more. They were right here, but I don't know. Like, wow, there's a pool here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it doesn't really work. Yeah. 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 When, the, when the town it's pushes, pushes the snow to the end of the street, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and then you get some rain, and the sheet flow comes down, it's probably going to sheet flow right better off going into the, the rain guy. Mm -hmm. That's the thing you got to uh -huh. sort of think through for yourself. This is a proposed for a fruit. It's just going to be a line prep. I don't get into this. Is that what it was? No. No, it was. To be honest with you, I'm currently not. Two foot by three bags of pea stone. Or do it myself. Spillway. I think also some. So it wasn't. Crushed over you know, those big certain things. Certain things where it was sheeting off the so obviously were done. Better keep that from the road as well. So I think this is all rock. This this was this was yeah. all rockish. Yeah, yeah. Coming that down you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot more. Is there was riprap in front of it. So this is here. Basically. Yes. There was riprap in front of it. And the pipe almost. And the worst storm is probably just jetted right over the whole thing. So. Yeah. So I just need some I mean, yeah. So, it, but it's there's some housekeeping. I, I think uh, if if you want to give Chuck a call and you know whether it's Chuck or somebody from the commission, I can get out there if, if you're doing something and, and you just want to just make sure that oh, it's, is this what you guys are talking about? I, I think that can help. But um. I mean, you, you guys kind of tell me what you what you're looking for me to do at this point. I mean, I kind of I try to put my best foot forward with it. Um, yeah, so if there's anything confused on the list or that you want further explanation for or okay. So um I'd set a uh, a time limit considering it's November eighth. Right. Okay. So something you know, we're talking spring. I think yeah. We're also gonna bring up the the crushed stone at the end of the driveway. I'm not remembering that. What's going on with I, that? I, I, Along the garage. Where the, where the um, oh, truck, truck was. The, the black truck. Mm -hmm. the fr yeah. So we don't see the front, the crushed stone. When did that? Yeah, well, on the approved plan okay. either. So we're just wondering about um, that. Uh, that crushed stone is going to be. You know, five, more than 55 feet away from the wellant. Isn't it going to just take more? Like, it's a drip trench, just like what we're saying they need off the other. It would be nice if the, mm. the driveway if actually fl flowed into that, that area. direction, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, is there is there anything else that it could cause any sort of issue? I can't. I, I can't think of anything. Mm. All right, so um, 
you want to request a uh, plan change for that stone area and have that come up in uh, the spring with the rest of the stuff. We'll look at it again or propose and for that change. We would get a plan change. Yep. And um, if Jack could show that on the plan, that would be good. Would that be on the original or is it, is the No, no, on the as built. We could just show that area on the, on the as built. And you might modify this somehow, so we might have to you know, change the as built for the way the rain garden is also. But we can, why don't we meet now or as soon as we can so you can, you know, think about what the, your action plan may be to get this thing working. Yeah, I'd like um, to before Frost really fits, I'd like to at least get the, you know, the riprap on the, right around the front where the boulders are, I'd like to get that situated. And um, I'd like to get the bounds all sorted out. Um, I guess, I mean, as much as you tell me I can get done right now, we'll get it done. I mean, I'd like to put this to Get it all done. I don't want to keep this going for the rest of my life. Get it all done. Get yeah, it all yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. We're not we telling you not to. We want it before frost. And what yeah. the weather bit says, you couldn't do it before Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. supposed to be 22 on Saturday. you got about Saturday. two hours, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it takes a while for the ground to freeze. But. Yeah. You, um, do you mind, could I, could I call you tomorrow and we can schedule a time sure. to me do a quick walkthrough? Yep. That way I'm clear on everything and I can just get it done. Not a problem. Like Good idea. Uh, and then uh, the cleaning up of the brush. Did you say you were doing that already? Okay. Well, there's, we'll, we'll go over that too. But in the in the order in the meeting, we did ask for that brush at the base, um, which is beyond the 25 foot line, to be cleaned out. That's that looks like it's a big project. I never recall saying we were doing that. Did we? Yep. Should have read better. I guess. <laughs> um, Okay. If I sign and said I'd do it, I'd do it. And I honestly wasn't aware I was supposed to do it. But I guess that's my business. So it's just a brush. What is it? The well, we'll do a quick walkthrough. Yeah. We can You'll see some leaves that have been built up, and also um, there were branches laid on top of each other. Yeah. So this is from far past. This was pretty site inspection. Nothing's been yeah, no, I think, past that wall. I think this was actually before. Wait, when we when you came in, in that, that pile existed, and I, I think I, I think I even recall from the meeting that there was a, a recent incident where people were actually coming and crossing your property and, and yeah, people were dumping, dumping it in there. Yeah. For wanting to put this up, so people knew it was our property. People yeah. were dumping on our property. Yeah. Um, even the other day, I mean, I have a dump trail. I took all my leaves out, so I know it's not for me. So anyway, anyway, we can do it. You can share with your neighbors that conservation doesn't allow dumping. I was very happy with Excellent. <laughs> I think that was a, you know, there was a recent one, right? Actually, we were proposing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So just give me a call and we'll awesome. get out there as soon as possible. All right. Great. Okay. So Thank you. For as it stands now, are we um, okay for occupancy? And yeah, we'll, we'll hold off on compliance? Do we need to vote on occupancy? I have no issue with occupancy at this point. Do, do I don't think yeah. we usually. No. I don't recall. No. Chuck, you do whatever is consistent with what you usually do. Is yeah. my, my, yeah. my recommendation. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, so you, I think you missed the part of the conversation where we were saying we're probably going to, we're signing off on the occupancy, but we were wondering about how to, how to do this part timely. So I guess we're just asking you to have it done as soon as possible or at least by um, June 1st? Yeah. 2018. Okay. Okay. I plan on trying to get it done the next week as well, so <laughs> be honest. Good luck. So we'll see what happens. All right. I think you it's can accomplish some of it. I don't, I'm not yeah, so sure we'll to get all of it. All right. Do what you can. Okay. Great. Okay, great. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks you very much. In. So uh, nothing else for me, for me and I can follow the future. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Have a good night. Um, Chuck, was that gentleman in the back, um, the Boy Scout from Athanasius? No? No. I thought it was a kid from Athanasius. Oh. Was he just interested in this project, maybe? I don't know. We may never know. He's doing a social studies project on good government.
Wrong place to so be there. Somebody left? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> You're live. <laughs> okay, 21 o'clock. Uh, Chuck, any administrator's report? Uh, there a, was a tree down on Track Road at 71 Track Road, and it um, pulled up some of the embankment of the drainage area, and the tree warden will take the tree out and the root because there was no way to cut it and let it go back in place. That wasn't going to happen. And the engineering department is going to look at the bank and come up with a design, but he'll let us know with an email. He's asking for an emergency uh, order to allow him to do the work. Uh, and he'd like to do that before um, it starts washing away. Okay. So right now the, I guess the stream is about a foot below where this cavernous um, loss of, of uh, soil happened. Which one is Track Road? It's behind oh, our yeah, I think it. Is it Track? Okay, yes. Yep. Near the Goddard School. Did I say Track? Yep. Uh, you did say Track. Might be Line Road. <laughs> Getting my roads over there. Back. Track Road, Line Road. Okay. Because yep. there's track. a couple houses there that are in um, Wakefield. Wakefield. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Only separated by a highway. No, it's track. It's right there. <coughs> Did you, you you went out and took take a you took a yeah, look? Yeah, I, I met um, Mike Hanford out there to look at the trees, massive tree, um, oak, and uh, it pulled up the bank and it and it just fell right across the, the lawn and uh, missed missed everything. But it. um, it's going to be a big deal getting that thing out of there. <sighs> Is it the same so, place where the oil spill was? It's the same place where the beaver dam was. Oh. If anyone went out to check that out. So. What about, um, does the bank need any restoration, any soil, any additional planting? So the uh, engineering department is going to take a look at it and propose a plan to okay. restore it. And they'll send us an email or a memo describing what they're going to do, but they'd like to work as an emergency permit. So I will let you know via email, but most likely the work will be done before we meet again. Okay. Okay. So we need to vote on uh, issuing? No. no? Okay. You, you're able to do that anyways? I can, I can issue it. Yeah. You need to ratify, ratify it after the next meeting. At the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. And so that process is you either say, this is fine and we don't need anything else, like a notice of intent, or um, we're not going to ratify it and we want them to file. Right. So that's the uh, Franklin Street project, uh, 4852 Franklin Street. We'll be starting, um, starting tearing up Franklin Street tomorrow. Uh, it's well coordinated with the uh, town departments and the police department and there should be you know some disruption and traffic flow but um, I they're not closing the street down so which one is that Franklin that's the Barton six States? unit project oh, um, on okay. Franklin Street across Barton the street from States, the uh, yeah. cemetery yeah, yeah. yeah I go by yeah. every night they get the looks like the so, so this they're gonna be starting the I believe area. after um, well, actually, the, tomorrow I think they're mobilizing at, at 7. And they, like they need the full day. Four big pieces of equipment there and a bunch of sort of cover Yeah, so this is to cut into the uh, drainage yeah. and bring it into the subdivision. How's uh, Tennessee Gas going? Um, Tennessee Gas is doing well, but uh, <coughs> Dave Panette actually has been checking on that uh, a lot. So they're not. Well, they weren't finished yesterday when we did our site visit. No, they actually think they're going to be finished. They hope to be finished on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, everything's going along according to plan. It's just, you know, they've had 
I think they they were held up from what the site supervisor said three days because they delivered the wrong piece of equipment. Right. So it just was like a comedy of errors and the and the hurricane winds and the rain and then something else happened and so but the the site was excavated. Um, uh, all the, the the damming and the the pumps and the the uh, filtration bag was put in, and uh, the last I saw, it, the articulated concrete mats were in, and they had filled over those mats, and now they they today I assume they I didn't look at it today I saw it yesterday afternoon late in the afternoon, and uh, it appeared to me that they were. Um, the next pro step in the process was they were going to be doing their finished grading. Sounds good. Good. And then no news on the low street one? No. No. I mean, that's what I was saying to uh, Bill Manuel was you sent out that notice and then three months later you, you start and you say, hey, I, I, you know, I... I give you notice. Yeah, I've given you, you notice. And I was trying to get notice. him to understand that Notice yes. needs to be within you know a couple of days of <laughs> do starting. It, do it, please, when mm -hmm. you actually have a plan yeah. to start. Very. I didn't understand that point, but no. It's very last just Thursday morning. Well, I think I think that everything is solved on that, and I believe it's going to be moving forward. I mean, the, the, what was stopping them wasn't conservation, but mm. um, whoever. Some last road Thursday morning, I saw uh, surveyors out. On Lowell Street at that site, I don't, and there was no one on that site. I so saw. I don't know whether there was, there was a roadway project on that, that project itself. But there were surveys out there last week. Did anybody from the commission? I forgot and wasn't able to go. Go to the meeting that was last Monday. What was that thing? The on housing. Meeting. Yeah. Yeah, I did. How was it? It was good. I thought it was good. If, um, I, I don't feel I, I I'm not an expert on housing issues. Yeah, I mean I'm a homeowner, but I'm not. You know I don't know I don't know planning. I don't know. Um, but but that said, we were handed I have the handout here. Uh, we were handed a, s a really concise summary of the housing needs and demand for the town. Um, and it was pretty interesting. So basically they asked for, um, they, they basically asked for our, our, us to work in groups and to come up with collective um, suggestions on uh, priority of housing strategies. Which strategies do we think would work? Um, which do we think wouldn't work? And what areas do we think should be prioritized? So Chuck was there too. Just so, for the food. so did they give you strategies? Some of the different they strategies? Gave us, they gave us nine you strategies. Gave us like three more email online. Nine strategies that, uh, you know. And oh, you didn't? They yeah. said if you have others, I forgot. I should have remembered. come up with them. But tell us what you think of these nine. Um, and it was facilitated by a group that um, that that our professional planning consultants certified with the American Institute of Certified Planners. Who was that group? From Goldson. Mm. Um, for for what that's worth, and they they went over what is affordable, and I I think for me. Personally, one of the more interesting tidbits that came out of it was um, that uh, what number of low, moderate income households actually exist in Reading, and we were given multiple choice, and it's 2,500 households in Reading are low to moderate income. Out of a total number of households of 9,300. Based on 2,500 are. Data or? Yeah, it's based on the town's data. It's based on. 
So how do they know That's if someone's owed a moderate income or not? There's, there's values associated with it. Um, it I don't. The value of the house. Uh, the, so, so what what determines low to moderate income is income at or below eighty percent of the area mean income, yeah. which for twenty fifteen in Reading was one hundred and seven thousand dollars a year. So, so how do they so, know how much? How do they know if I'm low income or not? Is it? That's you, a good question. Do, put your I name on something to say I'm requesting tax abatement, or is it? No, that's all right. That's, that's really know. not relevant to the yeah. conservation commission. I thought, well, that was I thought thing. Reading didn't have enough, didn't have enough low income housing. Well, I think what well, was, well, what I'm saying is, they no, they had to, they have to, well, even with that twenty five. Well, it's about providing, how much housing are they providing? To meet a ten percent threshold, right, Chuck? And they have seven. So, so they're so at seven percent. It's hard to get to ten. It's nobody has. To, yeah. I mean, very few towns like this have ten. Um, but yeah, I thought, like this, right? Well, but just in general, very few towns have it. Most you're allowed to be exempt from this. Well, the ten percent is it's, it's not even a, necessarily a requirement. It's it's what the goal is, and. Basically, what happens is, if you have that 10%, you have the right to deny a project that applies for the 40B, the 40B. 40B. And, and you're free to do it whenever. There's other yeah. thresholds that you can also deny it for. Um, if it goes in a town this size, I think it's a certain amount of units, you can deny it. Town greater size, you can deny it. But um, you know, the most towns that are closer to a suburban uh, a urban area have plans so as long as you're achieving uh, like it's like half percent a year increase you can still maintain this almost like you're at ten percent um, yeah. and they won't they won't come at, you know they you're have they you're free to, sh to to pick and choose the projects that you want if you're not trying at all if somebody applies it, it, more or less it could go uh, unless it just doesn't make any sense at all. Hmm. Yep. It got real tricky real quick. So. So that was that. It sounds like you should have been the man there. You already knew a lot of what they were talking about. You see a lot. And, uh, developers always thinking about it. So, um, so that so we provided some feedback with a couple of worksheets that we did, a couple maps we marked up, and we were told those were going to get taken to town hall to you to be used going forward in trying to put together policy strategies. That's what they're doing. Yeah, this is the public so. input input section. So. Yeah. It seems to me that there were no surprises, so the, their plan will just move forward. Okay. Okay. Any minutes for approval? We never did I, this. I, I know I never went back and corrected the ones that got messed up. <laughs> we just put it off till next week. And next one month. Next one month. Yeah, maybe we'll get it done by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have one meeting in December. Right, December sixth. Yep. It's not 6th. even on the regular time. It's December sixth. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, December sixth. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you can't make it. No, 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 no. I thought it was the third. I think I've got it on the oh. calendar as the thirteenth. Can you make it on the sixth? It was because it would have been the second That's Tuesday. That's I could make. Mm. Oh, is that a oh, Tuesday? You know, Wednesday. It's gonna be. Yeah, I can make it, but I can't make site visits. Oh, we have to change the site visits to to um, nine thirty on Tuesdays. Mondays. I thought you said Monday. Monday. Well, that's if we want uh, Rebecca to go. I thought we talked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're on 
You can, can, uh, you can make the <laughs> six. I will be here. Um, so. Okay. Sorry, I thought it was the thirteenth. So we'll change the. Um, you're, all, you're good for the six, and we'll change yeah. the site visits to Monday at nine thirty. Right. Okay. Monday nine thirty. Yeah. Of course, I won't make, be able to make that Monday. Okay. There's, I, I anticipate there's going to be one application for a uh, fence on Haverhill Street. So, but okay. I'm not sure. Right. I'm right. sure. I'm Big sure about that, Big but I'm not sure about any any other things. <laughs> Yeah. So, so we do we have any other business? No. No, hearing none. So we, when is our next meeting? Six. December sixth. Twelve sixth. And mm -hmm. that's it for the oh, year, right? right? Yep. Yeah. That's it for the year. So we better we talk about the next year's calendar. Yeah. That means. yeah so no, this is it for November. All right. And then it's the December meeting, and we don't have anything. We don't have anything filed, so it. It's, it's perfectly fine. I mean, that was like the day before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. did, Most did people are traveling anyways. Did we come out with the schedule yet for? Yes, we did. 2018? Yeah. yeah it's, on the, it's on the website. Okay. okay. Do I? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? This trend go.